Welcome to the first deck profile brought to you by Shuffle Draw 7, a series of deck profiles where we'll be bringing to you the post rotation builds of previous and new decks. These may be decks that were strong prior to post rotation with a slight twist. These may be decks that needed post rotation to put them over the mark. So, here today is the first of these decks an old friend, Zoroark Decidui. So, the Pokemon for this deck. We have four Rowlet, one Dartrix, four Decidui GX, four Zerua, four Zoroark GX, two Tapu Lele GX, a Deoxys, and a Tapu Coco. So the structure of this deck may look similar to a build that was piloted at the London Internationals. However, it's been slightly changed. So. One of the things we're running now with its push rotation is we use a Deoxys rather than a Mewtwo. Now Deoxys is essentially Mewtwo with minus 10 HP. So whereas the Mewtwo from Evolutions had 130, Deoxys has 120. However, the relevance of this card is that same as Mewtwo Evo, you are able to hit for 20 plus 20 more for each energy attached to your opponent's Pokemon. This is our Buzzwall counter, and it's something that will come in useful. So the main attacker of the deck is actually... Zoroark GX. Now Zoroark GX will two-shot most things. Its writer's beaten attack was 20 for each Pokemon on your side of the field, which means with a full bench you're hitting for 120, 150 with the choice band. There is nothing that cannot sustain a two-shot against this Pokemon. However, how do we turn this from a two-shot Pokemon into a one-shot? This is where Decidueye comes in. So, for each Decidueye that you've got on your field, once during your turn that Decidueye may place two damage counters anywhere on your opponent's side of the field. So you essentially turn a two-shot in Pokemon into a one-shot. For example, Buzzwell GX has 190 HP. Zorok is hitting for 120, 150 with the Choice Band, which means that with the Choice Band you are four damage counters short. However, if you have two Decidueye GX in play, you will Feather Arrow once, Feather Arrow twice, hit for 150 with Writer's Beating, you've one shot a Buzzwall. That's why the sync with this deck is great. Your Tapu Koko, which is a great all-rounder, it can hit for 20 for every single Pokemon on your opponent's side of the field. That Flying Flip ability can be very destructive early game. And the beauty is, it's got free retreat. Which means if you want to pivot into another Pokemon, you promote it, you retreat it, you're hitting fine. The two Tapu Lele GX, you'll see through the card shortly, that we've got a different deck engine here. So the engine of this deck, to search out to replace Bridget, which this deck used to love, is we will Lele for an Apricot Maker for two Nest Balls, and we will use those two Nest Balls to get out any combination of Zoro or Rowlet that we need. So, moving on to the supporters. In this deck we have four Cynthia, three Guzma, two Apricorn Makers, two Copycat, one Judge, and one Mallow. Now as with most Zoroark decks, Mallow is great with trade. So whereas with a standard trade, you wouldn't be sure what you're trading into. However, Mallow allows you to search your deck for any two cards and place them at the top of your deck. So you would Mallow and trade into those cards that you just selected. It's a great card for setting up. So, bearing in mind we're using a Stage 2 deck, you may want to Mallow for a Rare Candy. You may want to Mallow for a Guzma. The choice is yours. So with the post-rotation format, we've lost Dan, we've lost Sycamore. We need draw supporters. Cynthia is by far the best draw supporter in format at the moment, and a 4 of is necessary in any deck. Now, Guzma counts. People are on the fence about 3 or 4 in this deck. You will see we have escape rope as well, which means that Guzma, we can afford 3 copies. Now, Apricot Maker. As I said before, this is our first one draw engine. 
So we'll use Apricorn Maker, which allows you to search for up to two cards that have the word Ball in their name. So, you would Lele, Wonder Tag for Apricorn Maker. You would Apricorn Maker for two Nest Balls. You would then Nest Ball for either Azurua or a Rowler, depending on what it is that you need. Now, the, the beauty of this engine is that you are thinning your deck more than, say, a Pokemon Fan Club or Bridget, because you are taking away the Apricorn Maker, the two balls, which would be the balls in this case, and the Pokemon that you selected, which would be five cards. Deck thinning is a great thing to do in this deck, so you are always going to be trading into what you need. Now, Copycat, you may think it's strange that we've got two versions of Copycat in our deck when usually Copycat would be used against Zoroark. However, it could be that you've not got as many Zoroarks out, and your opponent playing either a Mirror or a Zoroark based deck, there are a lot of them out there, they've got more than you, and you really need that one card. Copycat's great in that sense. And Judge, Judge is a one of, it's great disruption. Now we've lost N. We need a one-off disruption card. We've got it with Judge. So for Judge, each player shuffles their card into their deck and you draw four. Turn one, if you are able to take multiple Zeruas and Browlets out of your deck and place them on a the field, Judge is great if you go first because your opponent is automatically down to four. It could be they can't recover from that Judge. So, that is the supporters. Let's look at the item count. So, as with any deck, we are running four Ultra Balls. As we are a Stage 2 deck, we need four Rare Candies. Three Nest Balls for our engine. Two Choice Band. Two Escape Rope. One Time of Ball. One Field Blower. One Multi Switch. And one Rescue Stretcher. So, Ultra Ball, everyone runs for. There's a reason for that. You need to search out Lele Turn 1, and if you need to search out any Pokemon, it allows you to search for any. And it allows you to also thin your deck. Ultra Ball is a great card. Now, Rare Candy, when you're running a Stage 2 deck, you need Stage 2 Pokemon out Turn 2. Especially in this deck, so we can start hitting those Feather Arrows. Rare Candy allows us to bypass the, the Stage 1, go straight to Decidueye, we're cooking on gas. So nest balls. The reason why I've not gone for four and only going for three is you would hope that only one at most would be prized. And in terms of space, four nest balls seems a tad clunky, especially when in this deck we've got a timer ball which would allow us, if successful, to search out a decidui or a Zoroark. Whichever one the situation calls for. Now, two choice band, we are primarily a two shot deck. However, the added bonus of choice band in certain situations cannot, and I mean cannot be ignored. It allows you to take one shots if you are hitting with feather arrows. It's a great combination. Now, escape rope. Escape rope is definitely a combination that people would not be all too familiar with in meta decks. Now, yes, Guzma is an infinitely better card, however, Guzma is also a supporter. So what Escape Rope allows you to do is to force your opponent, if they have a strong active Pokemon, they're going to have to retreat that. They're going to have to switch it with something else. It may be that they haven't got anything adequate to switch it with. Or it gives you a free switch yourself. The combinations are endless with Escape Rope, and I definitely think it is a slept upon card. So Field Blower, we have no Garbatoxin anymore. The only cards that will be able to stop our abilities are Glaceon, which Field Blower is not going to help in that situation, and Slaking. Again, Field Blower is not going to help in that situation. However, there may be things that you need to get rid of, be it a Stadium, be it an Opposing Choice Band. Field Blower allows you to do that, and if needs be, we can always mallow out to that. So multi switch. The reason why I've got multi switch in the deck is because what if you've got a Pokemon on your bench close to being knocked out? They've got a DC on there, or they've even got a Grass Energy on there. 
Do you need that energy to your attacker so they can hit for the numbers? Multi-switch allows you to do that, save resources. Remember, special charge is not a thing anymore, so we won't be able to get those DCs back. Multi-switch is a great card for that purpose. And finally, we've got Rescue Stretcher. Rescue Stretcher is great in both situations that it calls for. It could be that you need that one card from your discard. You need to evolve up to a Decidueye, or you need to evolve up to a Zoroark. You've got them in your discard. Rescue Stretcher gives you immediate access to that. Or it could be that you've got multiple basics in your deck that need an evolution. Or maybe you've got evolutions in your deck that need a basic. Shuffle those three in there, you're bound to draw into them. It's a great recovery card. So moving on to the energy. It's pretty simple energy count here. We have three grass and four DCE. So the reason for the grass. We may sometimes need to attack with Decidueye. Grass allows us to do that. And also Hollow Hunt is one of the very few ways that we can recover energy in this game now. It could be that Hollow Hunt late game for a DCE for the next turn win. This card allows you to do that. And as we are a Zoroark deck, we are primarily using DCE. For a DCE, you can hit that Writer's Beating. Not only that, 